recording. And I welcome everybody to this session, which goes back to a Facebook post I did on the 27th of May, uh, because I created a uh, canvas that one can use in working out loud circles and in other contexts. And people asked me if I can like give a short presentation on how that works and so on. Uh, so I ran a doodle poll, uh, offered three dates, and this was just the one, like the 9th of July, uh, 4 p.m. here in Germany. So what did I uh, prepare? Uh, just switch the presentation. I'll give you a short introduction at the beginning, uh, talk a little bit about the, the history of Lano S, uh, getting things done, and OKR. I suppose that most of you uh, know VOL, like working out loud already. Uh, so I won't talk about that much. Uh, I will show you the canvas in detail, uh, this visual checklist and storytelling tool that one can use in the working out loud circle uh, and how to use it in the circle. I will provide you with a checklist uh, over there. And then we go into uh, discussion in, in little groups uh, because we are like 20 at the moment. Um, uh, we will do this in small groups of four people or something like that in a breakout room. Uh, and then you come back from the groups with your questions and your hottest topics. And hopefully I will get some feedback and have also some answers for your questions. And at the end, I will just talk about the, the next steps, what you can do uh, with the canvas after this session and uh, how Lanos will progress, uh, make progress in the future. So let's start. Just uh, set myself a timer so I don't want to take too much time. For those of you who don't know me, I uh, am Simon, Simon Dukert, come from uh, Nuremberg. Here's where we, where we live stream from. Uh, I studied philosophy and electrical engineering in Erlangen, worked at the Fraunhofer Institute. This is where um, uh, MP3 comes from. I founded the Cognon Academy. I'm, I'm right here in the Cognon Academy. Back in 2001, developed some methods and tools and frameworks for knowledge management. So I come from the field of knowledge management and learning organization, um, and also enterprise to zero social media and the company. And um, we started in 2012 the so-called bench learning projects, which are cross-company projects uh, for knowledge and experience exchange. As you can see from the, the list of companies, this is also one of the sources where uh, working out loud spread, uh, like you have ZF there and Siemens and Telecom and so on. Um, in 2015, I was one of the 15 founding members of the German working out loud community. Um, we started to run circles here and see uh, if there is a, uh, if there has to be uh, adaptions made for German culture or German language and so on. And then we started to create Leno S uh, back in 2017, just uh, one and a half year ago. It's sort of a consolidation of our experiences from projects in the last 17 years, like the Adidas Learning Campus, uh, some of you might know, uh, or Enterprise to Zero at Audi or the Scheffler Wiki. And uh, as part of that, I also created the uh, Leno S Canvas, which we will talk about today and which has elements uh, from personal knowledge management, but also from getting things done by David Allen, uh, OKR from Google and John Durr, uh, Andy Grove, and working out loud from Bryce Williams and John Stepper. We'll have a look uh, into detail later on. So what is Leno S? Just uh, one slide to explain it uh, in, in short. Uh, the word Lanos comes from Esperanto, which is an artificial global language and is the future of to learn. So mi Lanos means uh, I will learn and mi Lanos means we will learn. So I thought this might be a perfect name for uh, an operating system for lifelong learning and learning organizations, because we think that uh, this is the modus operandi and, and also critical success factor for the 21st century. Um, the idea is that learners can be used by individuals, teams, and organizations, and that these three levels will be uh, interconnected. This is what OKR does. It's a target system that interconnects these three levels. We will see this later on as well. Uh, and we saw in the last 17 years that there's too much focus on, on tools and methods and, and the belief that if you just implement the right tool, uh, then everything will be good. And we saw that fostering the right mindset and, and train the right skills is almost as important to be successful in 
the digital connected knowledge society of the 21st century. So learners in this sense should be holistic and focus on mindset, skill set, and tool set. Another thing which might be good for you is that uh, Lanus is published under a uh, open license, Creative Commons CC BY, uh, which is a permissive license. Uh, it counts for the free cultural work, as you see on, with the logo on the right side. So what this means is that you can just download it, use it, remix it, share it. Uh, you can do anything with it. Um, also use it in a commercial context, sell it, whatever you want. It's uh, pretty much like Linux. Uh, or other open source projects. The first thing we created for Lanos was the Lanos wheel. Um, this is this mindset, skill set, tool set thing. It was inspired by Stefan Peter Rose, uh, a guy here from Nuremberg, from the co working community. Uh, also, the design thinking approach from Notash and the so called square wheel man uh, you see on the top left. Um, and you see this, this one guy who, who provides a round wheel to these two guys and they say, no, we don't have time, we're too busy. Uh, so this means we're operating with, with tools and, and mindset and so on nowadays, which is not a perfect fit for um, the knowledge society of the 21st century. Uh, and what we have to do is to provide new things and not just new tools and methods. If you exchange the square wheel with uh, only one third of the round right. wheel, Perhaps it's, it's better than, um, uh, than having nothing, but only if you have all the three, like the right mindset, uh, the right skill set, and the right tool set, uh, it will be a perfect fit for the 21st century. So this was uh, the first thing. Uh, then we sort of the uh, individual elements um, of Lanos, we created a sort of a house uh, metaphor um, with uh, a roof with certain values like purpose, passion, learning, openness, networking, trust, community, and also top performance. Um, I won't talk about this much today. Uh, then we had on the right-hand side, the gray box uh, elements also from personal knowledge management. Perhaps I will make uh, another session on this, uh, another event. I won't talk about this a lot today as well. Uh, and also as a foundation, this comes from getting things done, this idea of having uh, a memory extender. That's uh, Memex is short for memory extender. It comes from a paper as we may think by Wannemar Bush from 1945. Uh, and the, the pretty uh, genius idea from David Allen to get things out of your head and into a system you trust. Like uh, having something like OneNote, Evernote, uh, Filofax, whatever you use. Uh, to have your list and everything in, in place and don't have to store it in the head because our brain is good for having ideas but not good for storing ideas. What I will talk today uh, about is uh, these orange elements like um, one the, the three building blocks that build the core of Lano S, which is uh, Getting Things Done by David Allen. It comes from a, a book uh, created in 2001, um, especially for uh, productivity and efficiency of knowledge workers. Um, then objective and key results for effectivity and focus in the work of knowledge workers. Uh, and then working out loud for sharing and networking. And I will show you in the next slides how these three things uh, fit together, come together in the Lanos canvas. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions on the slides, we're not too many people like 27 or something, just unmute yourself uh, and ask your question. Perhaps this is more efficient than uh, flipping back to the slides later on. For those of you who don't know uh, getting things done, I put here uh, the process chart of getting things done from, a, from the very first ver version of the book. Like I said, the overall goal of getting things done is get the stuff out of your head and in a system you trust. Uh, by stuff, David Allen means everything that uh, we are flooded with as knowledge workers the whole day. We get assignments in a meeting, we get emails, we get messages, we get uh, perhaps letters as well or faxes. Uh, and we have sort of to, uh, 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 we have a, to have a process to handle that. So the basic uh, GDD workflow is to collect everything in an inbox, uh, to process it in a defined way, uh, to organize it, to review it, and uh, then of course to do it. Getting things done means doing things. And uh, the workflow on the left hand side uh, is just um, uh, you get an idea how this works, like how you process things and getting things done. 
uh, if you want to, there's a lot of stuff out there. It's a good Wikipedia page. There's also a, a PDF of the old version of the book out there in the internet. I could uh, post the, the link if you like later on. Um, important element of getting things done is the weekly review. It's used to process and update the system. Like normally you have a meeting with yourself, you practice GDD with yourself and have at least a one hour meeting uh, every week where you go over the whole system, update it, update the lists uh, and so on. And what's also important, GDD is tool agnostic. So this means you don't have to have a special software or something to practice it. It's quite similar to uh, working out loud. Um, you can use it with uh, a paper, of course, if you want, with a hipster PDA, with Outlook, OneNote, Evernote. There are special GDD tools out there, but in my case, I just uh, implemented it in uh, Outlook, uh, Microsoft To Do, and OneNote. Uh, but when you're on a Mac or on a Linux box, uh, there are other tools. So it doesn't matter what tool you have or what operating system or tool you have, you can implement the workflow of uh, getting things done there. Uh, then a few words on uh, objective and key results, OKR in short. Uh, OKR is, a, um, is an agile planning and governance process. It was created by uh, Andy Grove, the former CEO of Intel and dates back for quite a long time, 1983. Uh, he created it and um, it was brought to Google uh, in 1999 by John Durr. Nowadays, John is an investor and venture capitalist. Back then he was manager at uh, Intel. So he get, uh, got to know this, this method and brought it to Intel. Um, there's a very good video on objective key results on YouTube from um, the Google Talks. I put the link on the, feud, uh, on the footer of the slides so you can just copy paste the link and um, you can watch the videos about an hour. Uh, also, I, I strongly recommend to uh, get a copy of the book in the Plex by Stephen Levy. It's a whole story how the management system of Google evolved. And there, if you, if you have it somewhere, pages 157 to 165 uh, are the ones where this uh, like uh, implementation of OKR is described. In short, um, what you do in OKR is every three to four months, uh, you define a um, maximum of five objectives. Um, uh, and for each of the objectives, you define a maximum of four key results. And which is typical for Google, they are really, really data driven. Uh, the results have to be measurable uh, on a scale from zero to one. And the idea is that you, uh, that, that the perfect uh, complying, a uh, uh, perfect match with your uh, key results would be to reach a scale of 0.7 to 0.8. And this is done to uh, set yourself ambitious goals. So if you always, for all of the, your key results, you have a 1.0, uh, your goals might not be ambitious enough. Uh, so that's Google, Google way of thinking. They have this, uh, this notion of roof shot goals and moonshot goals, like you should always set yourself ambitious goals, so to say. Uh, OKRs are defined on several levels. They're defined on individual level, on the team level, and also on the organizational level, but they are not implemented top down in a strict way. It's not like this typical process of uh, employee talks on a year and performance reviews. It's more a uh, natural way of goal set setting. Uh, in, in the book, in the Plex, it's described as Google's operating somehow like the web. Uh, it's the small pieces loosely joined, they interconnect, they influence each other, but they are no strictly implemented top down. And also the five objectives that you set for yourself, for example, uh, only half of them should be top down and the other two should be bottom up, uh, should be objectives that you care about that uh, Google wants, you know, says lag time or 20% time uh, objectives that you have, you can put them in the OKR as well. And this fits perfectly in my eyes, at least, uh, with the idea of working out loud, where you uh, set a goal for yourself um, for the course of 12 weeks. And uh, if we think about lifelong learning, after this 12 weeks come another 12 and another 12 and another 12. So this is the uh, basic engine of uh, OKR. 
And what's also interesting, uh, OKRs should be always transparent across the organization. So if you uh, search in MoMA, which is the internet of Google, and you search for Larry Page, for example, you find his profile and you find his OKRs interlinked there. So you can see what the uh, OKRs of other uh, team members, teams, and also the whole organizations are. It's a very brutal transparency, you can say. I just put you a few screenshots of a presentation of the uh, Adidas daughter, daughter Rantastic. Uh, they implemented OKR on the company level. Um, you can see that their OKRs, you can find them on the wiki, like in, in the digital version, but they also print it out and put it on the floor. So if you come to a department, you see what the, the OKRs there are, and you can see if there are any employees who have um, similar goals than you have, for example. Also here at the footer, you find the link with the whole presentation from the OKR forum last year. Uh, you can have a look in detail there. That's just for an overview today. So now uh, for my experiences with working out loud, perhaps you remember the, the first slide, I did some 10 plus uh, working out loud circles uh, since uh, 2015. Last year there was a public one as well. We recorded it and put it on YouTube. And there were some things I was struggling with in, in the circles. I always had a, a one note with one section for the 12 weeks where I wrote down uh, which messages I changed, which um, uh, which exercises I skipped, or where I, I had other exercises. And one thing I struggled with was the documentation uh, in the wall circle. Um, the, the circle guides are delivered as a PDF document, uh, and a PDF document by definition is not a living document or an evergreen document or a dynamic document. And the wall guides are no PDF forms uh, at the same time. So you can edit it. And uh, if you have a look at the screenshots on the left, it comes from, from uh, wall guide circle one. Uh, you have these uh, lines where you can put something. Perhaps you, you write with an iPad and a pen inside. Uh, but a lot of uh, people printed it out and, and wrote in uh, on the dead wood, so to say. Uh, as a consequence, in my circles, I saw that the circle members did not really remember what they wrote weeks ago or even the last week. When you ask them, what's your goal, what's your uh, contribution list, and, and so on, uh, they didn't know. They had to search for uh, the papers, and they didn't find it, and they reworked everything. And uh, therefore, there's no uh, way to handle circle documentation in an agile way, because when you, when you like wrote in the four lines, uh, if you if you don't do it with an erasable pen, you, know, you have to rewrite it or put it on the back on, on the paper. And I want to have a more agile way to document it in circle. And when someone uh, asked a circle member, like, what, what are you doing there in a the circle? There was also no way uh, to have a sort of a storytelling approach to tell your story of the circle. And another issue was that the wall guys say little about necessary infrastructure for knowledge workers, like where to use wikis or web blogs or social networks or file hosting services and so on. And uh, this I also wanted to put an emphasis on to help knowledge workers to create their, create or design their infrastructure on a personal level. So I remembered uh, the business model canvas. It was created by Alex Osterwalder. Um, you know, back in 2008, it's a graphical framework to describe and design business models in nine building blocks. Uh, normally, it's done uh, for startups or uh, if you want to do a redesign of a, of a business model. And it's a more agile way to describe your business as a business plan. There are also adoptions for uh, business models on team level and individual level. You can uh, search a bookstore like Business Models for Teams and Business Model U are the titles of the two books. What I also remember was a, a citation by Alex Osterwalder. Uh, he said, you never write on a canvas, that's a crime. Uh, that's why post-it notes were invented. Uh, you do this because you, when you think about a, uh, a business model, uh, you experiment with the, the business model, you have to change things, you, you have to put uh, another idea on it and then uh, throw it away because you have a new idea and so on. If you write it on the canvas, uh, you will always have to scramble the whole paper, throw it away and start from scratch. So normally you work with a canvas when you work on paper or on a, on a whiteboard. 
uh, you you paint it there or you print it out the canvas and then you put post-its inside uh, or there are also uh, digital tools like the canvanizer for example these are tools uh, where you can like put virtual or digital um, post-its and this idea i transferred on the the Lanos canvas i just took the same basic structure like the business model canvas and derived the um, nine building blocks from uh, as i said methods like getting things done objectives and key results pkm and wall uh, and there are like uh, these building blocks. I just want to talk about each a little bit more in detail. Um, as you can see at the at the center of the um, uh, just a moment. I hope you you see this like this here. At the center are the objectives and key results. Um, where in the original business model canvas is the the value proposition. Um, and what I see in circles is that often people were not sure about the goal they should choose. Should they choose a private goal or should they use a business goal? Uh, the, um, uh, the cases that I had were mostly of using uh, these methods in a business context or in an organizational context. So I, I said that um, the, the three contexts coming from contexts coming from getting things done, like your roles, your activities and day-to-day -day business and your projects, might be sources for objectives and key results. Um, on the right-hand side, you see the, uh, um, the relationships and social networks, like uh, people that can help you in your social network with reaching your objectives and your key results or have parts of the key results that you want to create. Um, on, the, on the bottom here, on the lower la left side, you see um, your knowledge and skills. Like perhaps an objective that you have also comes from a, a domain or field of interest of yours. This might be, and when when you uh, when you work on your objectives and you create a key result, often uh, there are knowledge assets emerging. Like you document something or create a presentation or a mind map or a checklist, uh, and this is uh, the lower right side, like the knowledge assets, uh, things that you have, knowledge that you. Uh, is, is stored somewhere out of your out of your brain that you can give away without losing it, and uh, therefore is this uh, last field here my repositories? Like what are the the buckets and boxes where you put your knowledge assets inside internally, uh, like a OneDrive share or a file share or your SharePoint section or something like that, but also externally like a Dropbox, a G Drive, a SlideShare. Um, YouTube uh, repository, um, whatever uh, you use there. So when when uh, we put this together, you could sort of tell the story uh, with this canvas, like you have objectives and key results, they are derived from your roles, your activities, your projects, and or your knowledge and skills and interests. Uh, you need persons inside the organization or outside the organizations that uh, help you with reaching these objectives and uh, they help you through uh, interconnections in social networks, internal and external social networks. And you have this other flow on the bottom, like uh, you put your knowledge assets in repositories, so it's really easy to share with others. Um, this might sound a little bit uh, abstract, but I will show you um, an example uh, later on. Perhaps I've, I do this first. This is an example from, from my personal practice. Uh, don't be overwhelmed by all these uh, fake post-its over here. Um, I had uh, a situation where in my roles as a um, knowledge management coach and a moderator of knowledge retention processes called expert debriefing, saw in the projects that we did a lot of audio recording with experts. And um, I was thinking normally we, we used it for transcribing context, but I think uh, why not let the experts speak directly to the other employees? And I came up with the objective of learning how to podcast. Uh, we want to use podcasts in, in intranets, and I defined this for key results. I want to uh, record 20 minutes audio and edit it to get used to audio editing. I wanted to publish three episodes of podcasts by a specific date. I want to get 50 listeners for each episode, which is 150. And I want to get feedback at least from 10%, like uh, 15 persons on that podcast. 
Uh, formerly, I, from my, my work at the Fraunhofer Institute, I had a little uh, basic knowledge on MP3 and also with the tool Audacity uh, for, for editing audio, but not much. Uh, I knew a little about WordPress and also RSS and feeds, which are used for delivering podcasts, but also not enough for uh, just running my own podcast. So I was uh, searching for people that can help me. I found Markus Wolf and Tim Pritla, Frey Ortega, and so on, which are all people who are well known uh, if you search for podcasting in the German or international podcasting scene. Uh, I found them on social networks like the podcasters group on Google+, uh, like the Sendegate, which is the German uh, podcasting community, and also the uh, Facebook group um, podcasting made in Germany, PC Mick, it's called. Uh, with the things I, I learned, uh, you see it here with the assets, I created a podcast 101 for listeners. I documented a session that I ran on a bar camp. I uh, found a very nice sketch note on podcasting in a nutshell. Uh, created a whole wiki book with a description. It's uh, in German, but it's stored on wikibooks.org. Uh, and so on, and I put it in the repositories that I had, like our public wiki, our public cloud to store documents, and also the blog I have. So this is store, sort of the, the, the way like you work with these uh, canvases. And as you can imagine, when you print it out and, and put it on, on the wall, you can on a, on a weekly basis uh, change it, put new names there, uh, put new ideas there, and it's a very, very agile way to work in, in the circuit. Just flip back two sides to give you an impression on how to use it in a wall circle in a systematic way. Um, you see on the left hand side uh, the weeks from week one to 12 and the 31 exercises. It's just the title of the exercises, like what brought you here in week one and so on. And on the right hand side in, in the column with the Lanos canvas, I just put the idea what you can do with the Lanos canvas in this specific week uh, when working on one of the exercises. So just two or three examples. I won't go through the whole uh, list because then it would take too much time. Uh, for example, if you uh, do exercise two in week one, your goal for the next 12 weeks, it might be a good idea to formulate your wall goal as an objective and define also key results like what what on a measurable scale from zero to one do you want to reach in this um, 12 weeks? Um, another thing, if you do exercise three, create your relationship list. Uh, you can uh, put names or roles if you don't know the persons yet in the section, my relationships. Of, uh, if you put a post-it with a role there and then you search in the social network and you find a specific person, you have a name, then you can just put the name on the post-it or replace the, the post-it with the role with the concrete name. Uh, another thing, uh, exercise seven in week three, leveraging existing networks. Uh, there you search for uh, networks and groups like I did with this podcaster um, communities in Facebook and so on. Uh, this you can use to update the section, uh, the network list and the groups you found uh, in the canvas as well. Uh, if you don't have an idea in the first weeks and you get more specific in week three and four, you can just replace the post-its with, with new uh, stuff and so on. So, so you get a sort of an idea how to work with, with the canvas in an uh, agile way. Uh, the second page, page 16, is just the rest. It's like week seven to 12. Uh, what you can also see is that there are exercises in working out loud that don't have a clear connection to the Lanos canvas, like a letter from your future self, for example, you write the letter and I think it wouldn't make sense to uh, put the letter somewhere in the canvas. Uh, the canvas is uh, used for all these uh, list style things and everything that is necessary to tell the story to another person, like your personal wall story, so to say. So, uh, two minutes left in, in my time scheme, uh, since we're a lot of people and um, I don't know what the, the specific questions are that you, that you might have. My idea was to split in small groups of five now uh, and discuss in the next five minutes, like, what do you like about the canvas? Of course, if you, if you dislike it, uh, what do you not like about the canvas? And also discuss in the group shortly, what is your biggest open question? Um, every group should like uh, choose a spokesman 
who presents the result from question one to question uh, two when we come back here. Um, this is a, a feature of the tool, so I will uh, unmute you now and uh, automatically split you up in that groups. Um, we have, we'll have 20 minutes uh, left then to present the results from the group. If this is not enough time and we, we don't be able to address the result from all of the groups, there's also the option to do a short video recording of the message and put it in the Telegram group. Uh, and then I will, I will uh, watch it and will try to answer the questions um, there. So just a moment, I will unmute you. And then I will send you to the uh, to the group, hopefully. Um, if you're not unmuted, you just have to find the button. Um, so, and uh, <clears throat> you will get a you will get a short message uh, that you uh, might be able or that you're able to join the breakout room. Just click it, and then you are in the breakout room, and you should be able to listen to uh, the four other participants there. Oh, just a moment. Start the session. So now you should have this invitation and be able to switch to the breakout room. If somebody wants to uh, like ask me a question, you can also stay here in the plenum and ask me. I will stay here in, uh, in the next five minutes and then I will get you back. Okay, so everybody seems to be back from the breakouts. I see people joining. You can unmute yourself and uh, perhaps we go through the groups, starting with the group one. Uh, is there anybody, or is there anything group one wants to share? Like Was I like, one? Pardon? I don't know if I was group one. This is Sabina speaking, but I, yeah. have, I had a group with Manfred, Yen, and Simon Burda together. And um, first of all, the uh, now you're... The, that, yeah. you can send, that you can send people into breakout rooms. That was an amazing um, experience. Um, I have asked the others on how they feel about the Learn OS Canvas, and they were all like that they like the structure. You oh, are kind of uh, they like the structure, then the, it's the, whole, the, video it's was the whole time, yeah. It's the whole time. The, the, the line, it's also uh, oh, you're, you're also quite many times you're interrupted, so maybe it's uh, my internet, yeah. It might be like uh, Ma Manfred they were or appreciating the structure, mm -hmm. and then uh, like. I think like with all complex tools, it also feels a little bit frightening to fill it out for the first time. So it feels also, so it feels complex and uh, it would probably be a great help to have a very narrow um, guidance through uh, filling it out for the first time. Yeah. Perhaps it's like with getting things done. I started uh, using getting things done in 2005, I think. And I would say I'm still not finished. Uh, every time I look in the book or something, I still learn something new. Or when you're in stress, you don't use it in the way it's, uh, it's, it was the, the idea and you still have to work on it. It's, perhaps it's a, a feature of lifelong learning that you won't be finished somewhere. Mm -hmm. Did you have any, any big question you want to share? In circle one or in the group one? Anybody else? Hi, uh, hi this is Manfred. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I have a question. Have you used this canvas tw uh, since uh, 2005 or? Uh, no. No, 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 no. No, no, I started using, um, using getting things done back in 2005. I used it on, on basis on what's called a hipster PDA, which is a, a paper PDA, which you put together with a paper clip uh, and a personal wiki. And I did this uh, weekly review process. Um, I learned in, in my studies in, in 1995 about the concept of the mastermind groups, which goes back to a book from 1927, I think, where you meet with uh, five to 10 people on a regular basis that help each other to, uh, to support each other to, to reach your goals. And these were just 
three or four guys practicing getting things done, meeting once once a week, uh, talking about their goals and so on. And the canvas I created like uh, last year, the first version I think, and and now in April or something, this this the version that we have right now. How many challenges uh, to uh, get the right uh, capabilities do you have now? Use this canvas. Sorry, I, did, I didn't get... Uh, how, how, how often you use this canvas now? Well, we, we use it as a, as a goal management system. So uh, I have just OKRs for every quarter that I work in. And this is just my normal, my personal goal management system, so to say. And uh, the, in the working out loud circles I did, for example, the working out loud goal was just one amongst the, the other five I had there. Oh, you got okay. five times, uh, five, five... Well, OKR, I, I run OKR since uh, one and a half year, I think. So I'm, I'm now in this sixth sprint. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So perhaps circuit two or group two, who was in, in the second group and wants to share something? I see Michelle, for example, in which group have you been? I'm not quite sure. I think I was group group three, but I'm not quite sure. Okay, yeah, but another group than than well. Sabine. What what? But if we are two, I can I can also start. Yeah. Actually, Thomas like to do that. So. Yeah, because we are group three. Yeah, so. go on. I I, okay. I don't remember the the group number. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Um, then I had the group with Kerstin and Michelle Becker, mm -hmm. um, and they all both. Uh, went through working out loud i guess um not everyone is ready yet so the kind of uh, positive thing is the structure so having all structured together on one canvas is a very good thing um to have kind of an overview that's a, a really really positive thing here and uh, for me as well i would say um having this 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 visual progress uh, is always very good um, to keep on pace and for, for me for myself uh, i made working out loud i guess i finished in may mm -hmm. and uh, we here um, at continental we have this uh, intranet and i organized um, the whole working out loud circle in the in, in a closed group so mm -hmm. yeah. i did my my own um, how would you say uh, structure Okay, so you had sort of a, a page per circle member there where you document everything like the goal yeah, right. and relationship. Was, is. Right, uh, everyone has had its own, uh, like to say, notepad and on the notepad um, it was also uh, very open and everyone wrote uh, his list in and uh, added his tables and so on. Yeah. Without this, um, that would have been uh, a bit harder, I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had um, this. Uh, yeah, okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, I just wanted to go to the question two. Mm -hmm. If you okay. want to add something yeah. to question one, please go on. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I had uh, also one circle where we documented in a social network. And mm -hmm. the problem for me was that always when I want to look something up, the social network was not there because it took a lot of time to, uh, from the mobile device to connect and to see it. So what I did is just I had the the canvas on the whiteboard and did a photo of it and okay. used it as the background image of my lock screen in the smartphone. So from then on, every time I, I turned on my, my iPhone or my iPad, I had my canvas there. It was not the current version, but it was at least some version of it. And every time I turned on the, the smartphone, I had it at my hand. This is what, what helped me. But I didn't want to interrupt you. Okay, You're that's also a good idea. To have it always uh, with you. And, yeah, sure. um, yeah. Sorry. Question two. Um, what's your biggest open question? Um, for me, it would be like, would it is it possible um, to to really download it and install it on perhaps here in in, in this big um, company on every computer without admin rights and so on? Or well, is it uh, yeah. Um, I, I will show a link later on where, where all this documentation is. Uh, right now, there is a PowerPoint version, a PDF version, uh, um, SVG version, like an, an, an image version. And Magnus in the Telegram group also provided a OneNote template. So you can use the canvas as one page in OneNote. Mm -hmm. 
because that is sort of the idea to not have to have a special software, but to like uh, put it in a system that you already use on a day-to-day -day basis to have it close to where your work gets done anyways. Mm -hmm. One That's idea. Uh, one idea would be um, to, to build a website out of it where everyone can register and put the canvas there. I will, I will show you one, one, uh, one link where this is possible on the last slide in the last minute. Yeah, very okay. good idea. Okay, so anybody from group two? We skipped it. Group four. Don't be shy. Yeah, to be honest, I have no idea what group number we were. But you were not in the two groups that we already had. No, I wasn't. I was in a group, group with X. Uh, group X yeah, <laughs> that consisted of uh, me, Carl, Helmut, Sylvia, and Mark. Helmut wasn't able to connect or wasn't able to talk. Yeah. Um, but Mark and Sylvia had experiences in uh, working with the canvas and working with uh, working out loud. Yeah? So um, they were two steps in front of me. Mm -hmm. So uh, they talked a bit uh, about their experience and then they liked the approach, but were concerned about the whole idea of transportability because this is still the idea of what you showed us is a paper thing with uh, paper post-it, so how to really have it everywhere available. And you touched on this uh, uh, when you talked about the pictures you snapped uh, or the ideas we just mentioned with a, a website or a social network you can base it on. Yeah, so uh, I think it was already answered uh, in part. Yeah, I think there's no, no final answer yet. Like uh, I have it as a front page in my OneNote, for example. Uh, we also experiment with uh, embedded in uh, Office 365, like uh, have the OKR as a planner implementation. Uh, we also did it on Trello boards uh, to have OKR in Trello and you can implement the whole thing, thing there. I think it's important that, uh, as I said, with uh, getting things done, getting things done is tool agnostic. Uh, also, Lanos and the canvas has to be tool agnostic. So if someone's working with OneNote, it should be able, he should be, he or she should be able to implement it there. If you're on a Mac, perhaps you have other tools. And I think we will see a lot of mm -hmm. different implementations in the future there. Yeah. yeah. And one more thing, uh, Mark just wrote me, um, uh, how you're able to measure progress or measure success on the canvas. Is there a special tool, a special thing you would, you used or you can use? Yeah, I, uh, I at the moment have my OKRs in Planner. So uh, if you have used Microsoft Planner, you can, you can like uh, report on the progress. Like for each, I, I have one bucket for each objective and for like items for every key result and they can track process on a scale from zero to hundred percent like with, with normal goal setting tools the same you can do on on trello uh, and if you use the the, the progress chart of uh, microsoft planner you also can have something like a burn down chart where you can see over the the course of the three months uh, if you're on track to reaching your objectives there yeah and the same is true for Chira, for example, Grasshopper, if you come from the Agile world and, and use tools for, um, uh, for making burn down charts, uh, it's, uh, you're able to do that there as well. Okay, so we have uh, perhaps group five, everybody, anybody from group five or a group that we didn't talk to yet? Nobody. Simon, do you hear yeah. me? Yeah. Uh, here's Alfred from Group Four. Okay. From, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, I have no uh, <laughs> no video. Um, no problem. I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the group with Andreas Müller and with Manuela, mm -hmm. and we talked about um, the normal canvas uh, you read from the right side to the left side. Yeah, it's a little bit um, tricky for using your idea. Uh, 
but uh, as a wall uh, man <laughs> working out louder i like the your idea from this in the center is the are the objective key results and in the middle and um i think it's a good idea to to measure your your process and yeah. to make it make it visual yeah and it's uh, yeah it's a little bit uh, tricky but it's not bad yeah yeah, it's, I think there's no, uh, so say, no right structure <laughs> because in, in the business model canvas, you sort of have the value chain from left to right. Yeah. Uh, if you listen to the, the talks and podcasts by Alex Osterwaller, uh, what he says when they analyzed business plans, they said that uh, one problem with the business plan is that normally it's a linear word document. So you write it from top to bottom, so to say. Mm -hmm. And there are no interconnections between the, the chapters at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so his idea was to, to order it in a visual way because uh, the right side of our brains works in a, in a more visual or geospatial way. Uh, then you can create stories with the, the building blocks that are next to each other. And I think, of course, uh, perhaps someone in a year or so comes up with another structure which fits better. This was just uh, the first bet or second or third bet uh, version um, to sort of tell the story. Where do my goals come from? Who can help me to, uh, to reach mm -hmm. the goals? And how can I contribute knowledge assets via repositories to my social network? Yeah, yeah. What my uh, biggest uh, <coughs> challenge is that uh, the last weeks when I saw the, your idea and and, and the model, um, where could I see or where could I sort my my passion, my my mindset, my um, intrinsic motivation in this model? Do you have any ideas, Simon? Uh, uh, not a good yet. Perhaps you saw that there is a um, that there is a field called purpose at the at the top. Okay. Uh, I when you read the documentation, there are also anchors to uh, Golden Circle, uh, the three the three Ys by Simon Sinek and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, Future Backwards by Dave Snowden. Uh, I plan to have this as part of it as well. Uh, also have like dojos, one day workshops where you work on, on these things. Uh, but it's, it's difficult to, uh, to put it on a very uh, neutral and, and, and column-like thing, like a canvas. Yeah. Uh, the canvas is, is more a thing to have your lists and the things that you need and things that are interconnected mm -hmm. in, a, in a structured way. Uh, if, you, if you Google for business model canvas, you see a lot of canvases that are drawn in a really um, beautiful way like mm -hmm. mind maps when you do a mind map with mind manager it looks uh, more like an sap thingy uh, <laughs> but if you if you draw it on paper and it's colorful and uh, you put your heart in the center and so on you can make it a mm -hmm. very emotional thing as well okay uh, but for the first step i just wanted to have this metaphor of the business model canvas and have sort of a one-to-one -one translation of the structure because there's a lot of documentation out there how this works and perhaps in the future we'll have a more uh, emotional version as well thank you for work on this <laughs> okay thank you for sharing simon yep. bye so for the last minutes i just want to share my screen again can you see it yep okay. yes, yes. So just a few uh, ideas on the next steps. Um, I have to put the video image away. Uh, like what you can, can you do with it? The, the learner's uh, approach at a whole is in a very early state. Uh, so if you want to, I invite you to experiment with the canvas, share your experiences, spread the word in uh, your circles when you use it. Also suggest improvements. Uh, I'm always open to improving these things and be really curious to see examples and, and uh, listen to experiences. Uh, I put the whole documentation on GitHub, which is normally a um, platform for software version control. But for example, if you practice holacracy, the holacracy constitution also lives on GitHub. So you can use GitHub as well uh, for documenting or versioning uh, documentation. In this case, the learner's guide. I uh, put you the link here. 
since Saturday, Lanos also has a Twitter account. You can follow it uh, with the Twitter nick uh, Lern underscore or S. I also have um, an open user group on Telegram, which is an open and free and secure messenger, uh, pretty much like uh, WhatsApp, but uh, I didn't want to use WhatsApp for several reasons. So with this link t.me slash Lanos, you uh, just join this group in the Messenger, you don't have to have any invite or something. It's just open. And uh, if you want to, I would be happy if you run your first circle. Uh, I plan to release the version one of the guide um, at the 17th of September 2018, uh, because the I have the idea with this OKR scheme uh, to run four such sprints a year. Like a sprint is this 13 weeks planning of the circle, then having your objectives and key results in place, running it for 12 weeks, uh, then do a retrospective, like you know from Scrum, for example, uh, plan the next uh, sprint and group together in circles of four or five, like you're used from uh, working out loud. And uh, at the moment, the documentation is uh, under heavy work. Uh, there are people joining from, from the educational community, for example, they want to use it in the German Volkshochschule or in schools or in high schools. So there will be a lot of things done. Uh, you can see it in the issues and also the milestone planning on GitHub, but uh, we will keep this, uh, this strict time box to uh, uh, have a version one in place two weeks before the quarter four uh, sprint starts, so to say. So what you can say is that now Learners is in alpha and then it will be in perpetual beta because I think it will be never finished. We plan to have sort of a release cycle every three months. Uh, so have uh, a new version of the guides every three months. We're in conversation with several um, automatic translation providers. So the idea is to, uh, to have the, the versions in English and have automatic translations to other languages. So we'll be able to uh, release all language versions on the same day, hopefully. Uh, as you can see on the, on the left-hand side, uh, this, this Canvanizer in, uh, image, um, this is done. I mentioned uh, Stefan Peter Roos, who, who brought us or put us on the idea of Mindset Skills at Two set. He's also run, running the Canvanizer tool. You can log in there and uh, create a canvas for yourself. And um, uh, we are working during the summertime when the, the final version of the canvas is ready for the 1.0 1, 1 version to have the Lanos canvas as template there as well. So then you can uh, like start your canvas over there uh, in, a, in a session when, for example, you have a phone conference or web conference, everybody uh, who opens the website can see the post-its, you can put it around, you can comment on the post-its, you have a brainstorming area. So perhaps there's a little bit of the, the answer of the question that came up uh, before on uh, how to work with it in a digital way. So that's from my side. Uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for your feedback. Uh, I recorded everything. I will go through each of the, the feedback elements and the suggestions, and I'm really happy that you joined. Um, so on GitHub, is it? Yeah, uh, Alfred, uh, I just read your question in the chat. Uh, the GitHub link, the, the second bullet point uh, is the entry point where you find the overview and also the link to the current version of the guides and also the download links for the canvas in PowerPoint, PDF and so on formats. Okay, thank you very much. I, I stay in the line for a few more minutes. If you want to talk to me, um, uh, just stay also here as well. And otherwise, have a nice evening. Thank you so much. <laughs>